Hi everyone, I'm David Tischler, our Developer Program Manager here at Edge Impulse, and in today's quick tech dive, I'm going to show you how to leverage the power of NVIDIA's Tau computer vision models on Edge AI devices. Now, those of you already familiar with Tau might be thinking, wait a second, Tau is targeted at GPU and cloud workloads. And up until recently, that was true. But we've now taken a large batch of the Tau models and made them small enough to fit on Edge AI devices like the NVIDIA Jetson-based products and even some MCUs as well. Today, I'll use a Jetson, but this could also run seamlessly on production-ready hardware like the Advantech AIR30, iCam 520 or 540, the Aeon Boxer series of NVIDIA-powered gateways and computer vision devices, or other similar things. Let's get started. I'm going to start off here in the Edge Impulse Studio with a sample project I'll use for vehicle detection. This is a use case we see on a regular basis for security, smart city, traffic management, and of course, self-driving vehicles. In the traffic pattern analysis use case, you could likely get away with performing vision AI in the cloud, as you'd be interested in studying results after the fact to better optimize intersections and traffic light timing, or understanding the relationships between vehicles and humans. But in the other scenarios like security or autonomous navigation bots, real-time inference results are critical. So edge AI and on-device inference is the better solution there. It's worth noting that I'm using an enterprise account here, but our new pro plan will work. I'll click on data acquisition. And what I've done thus far is found an open source data set on RoboFlow that is just a portion of the much larger Coco image data set. And it's specifically trimmed down to only vehicles and people. This data set also included bounding boxes and labels in XML format to go along with each image, saving me the time of doing the labeling myself. In production scenarios though, you will of course want to validate and verify all training data that gets fed into a machine learning model. So you do your own labeling, but this is a quick way to demonstrate or test functionality. Now, the way I uploaded these images is simple. I've downloaded the data set from RoboFlow, unzipped it, and then you can simply use this upload icon here that will bring up this modal, and you can select the folder that has the images from your machine, and you can choose training, testing, or just automatically split them, and then click upload data to begin the process. Once complete, you'll see the pictures and their corresponding bounding boxes like I've got here. So with our data set ready to go, we can move on to creating an impulse, which is our machine learning pipeline where we'll configure processing and learning blocks to get ready for Tau. Clicking on impulse design on the left, you can see here that I have selected an image block and an object detection block, which will be required for this use case. For other use cases like keyword spotting, machine health, or wearables, you might need audio or time series blocks to process microphone or sensor data. But for Tau and Vision, this will be enough. On the image block configuration page, you can switch between RGB and grayscale and get a preview of raw and processed features for any item in the data set. And over on the Generate Features page, you get a visualization of how your data is grouping together. Now, I don't have much visual separation or clustering here in this data set, but for data sets that have a high degree of discrepancy or variety in the samples, you'll see more distinct bubbles or zones in the Feature Explorer. Next, we'll come over to the Object Detection Configuration page, and this is where we'll fine tune our neural network and training settings. I've gone mostly with the default settings here, though I did bump up the number of training cycles to a larger value and chose a slightly larger 2 million parameter backbone. You can also modify data augmentation, which will add some variety to the original images to try and build a more robust data set helping to create an end model that might generalize better in diverse real world conditions. And finally, scrolling all the way down, this is where we choose from a variety of architectures, Tau in our case today. You can see there are multiple options here, both Tau and other architectures as well. And there is even multiple 
choices from within the Tau family. I'll choose a Tau YOLO V4, which should give a nice balance of accuracy versus performance, but you can try other ones as well, depending upon your particular needs. When you're ready, just click the Start Training button, and the model will begin building. The model creation will take some time, but that's okay, because now we can transition to our Jetson and get it ready to actually run this vehicle detection model. The first thing I have done here is flash the NVIDIA Jetpack distribution of Ubuntu to an SD card and powered on my Nano, which is what I'll use today. But we support other Jetson devices like the Xavier, the AGX, and the entire Orin series from Nano on up. And these are nice for development work, but you'll eventually want to move up to production-ready hardware like the Advantech Gateways or iCams, AD Link, Seed Recomputer, or other similar devices like I mentioned earlier. Now here on the Nano, we've got a simple one-line script to run that downloads everything needed and gets the Jetson ready to connect to Edge Impulse. Once it's installed, we can just launch our Edge Impulse Linux runner and log in, select the project to run, and the model will build and deploy directly to the Jetson. It'll take a few minutes to get through this, so I'll cut over to the Nano's video output and then speed the video up for you. Now that it's finished, it's important to note that the model is running locally on the Jetson on its built-in GPU. And the same would also apply if it were on any of those other enterprise devices I mentioned. We connected to the internet for the initial download here, but after that, we're running entirely on device. So let's see if our Tau model is working as expected. It's a bit tougher to see now that I've switched back to the perspective view, but the runner has started and we're not detecting anything. But I have a browser ready on the Nano that is just a Google image search. And sure enough, once I get that in front of us, we'll then see the console change with the objects detected being output on each line. But we also spin up a small web server to render the camera output when we launch the runner. So let's have a look at what the Jetsons camera sees. We'll just go to the IP address of the Jetson on the network and we get a live view from the camera. And sure enough, there's the vehicles being detected. So Tau's picking up cars in this particular case, and we see the bounding boxes and confidence values. Here it's worth talking for just a moment about the path from prototype to production though. So I built a vehicle detection model for a security or smart city use case, and I've used a ready-made data set and development hardware. Next on the journey would be to ensure we have a representative data set 
probably a larger data set at that. And ensure there's variety in lighting, environmental conditions, et cetera. We'd probably wanna start testing just right out on the street here. Then we'd want to test with the camera placed in the location of the final device to make sure the model works from its ultimate viewpoint. Better yet would be to capture actual data from the exact vantage point, if possible. Then once you're confident in the model's ability, you can swap out to those enterprise-grade devices as well. But for today, and to just get started, I've demonstrated that NVIDIA Tau can now be used on Edge AI devices. You can rapidly test this out for yourself using our new professional plan. And if you have any questions, be sure to reach out. We'll be happy to help.